Hey guys, and welcome back to The Divine Witch. So today we're doing another installment of Makeup and Magic. Now, as always, one, I'm not a makeup artist. Two, this is my own personal opinion, so take it with a grain of salt, do your research, and so forth. Also, in the comments below, tell us some of your witchy tips that you use in the kitchen. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so I kind of got the dots on my face, but we're going to get a dive into this. Um, just so you guys know, Clean and Clear 110 is what I'm using. LA Colors Nude. There's a possibility that this guy is going to show up when I do contour, if I do contour. LA Colors Workshop is what I'm using for my eyes. Brush-wise, it's just cheap brushes. I got some other ones as well. And you're going to see this little CoverGirl concealer come up as well. So let's go ahead, let's dive in, and let's talk about kitchen witchery. So what exactly is kitchen witchery? I'm going to move this up a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't mess with the auto. But kitchen witchery is just like any form of witchcraft. You're basically using it to either summon, bring in, banish, or call forth something as you're working in your kitchen. Now there's a few different, you know, um, things as far as kitchen witchery goes and i'm going to share with you guys today those things along with some tips and tricks that i personally use within my kitchen witchery by the way if you guys end up hearing a wind chime sound today that is from my new camera installation um i decided a while back when someone was knocking at my door real late that it's time for me to actually go ahead and get an alarm system so that's what i did and so occasionally if you hear in the background a little uh, magical dinging. No, it's not me. I mean, it is me, but it's not me doing it just to mess with you. You know what I mean? Because sometimes when you watch videos, you're like, what does that sound? What are they trying to do to me? Mind control. And it's like, no, it ain't nothing like that. It's just my alarm system. So, what was I saying? So, with kitchen witchery, there's a lot of things that you can do with it. And I'm going to dive into this thing. So, kitchen witchery can be broken down into different sections. So imagine like when you're looking for a recipe, right? You have your drinks, your cocktails pretty much, and then you have your main dishes, your side dishes, your bakeries, and all that. So I'm going to try to go through all of them. I don't know if I'm going to get through all of them, but I'm going to give you the basis of what kitchen witchery is, and then we'll break it down into steps. So kitchen witchery, like I said, is bringing in things, taking in things. So how do you do that? Well, one of the first things that you want to do is you want to pick your ingredients that you are using. Now, depending on what region you're at, depending um, if you have stores, depending if you hunt or you go to a store for, you know, your groceries, really depends on how you do this. Now, if you are a hunter, you can use the hunting itself as part of the ritual practice. You can use um, the skinning, the butchering as another part of the ritual practice. Set your intent, what that meat's going to be used for. And then when you're digesting that, when you make your recipes, it's another good way. Um, you know, I don't judge people on how they get their food just for the reason being. I grew up in the country. So some people didn't have the money to go to the grocery store. It was go out to the woods, hunt, forage, or grow your own food. So I know how that goes. So when we come to making your food. You know, like I said, there's you want to check and see what it is that you're putting into your dish. So, you know, everything has symbolism, especially within the magical community and whenever we're doing anything um, magical, right? Like we look at our herbs, they have separate meanings. But if you look at food as well, it also has meaning. Um, I can't really think of anything right off the top of my head because, like I said, this is like one of those videos where you think about it and then, you know, you just kind of bring it out there. But... Whenever you're making something, depending on what it is you want to bring in, you can break it down by, okay, what's the intent? And then look up, you know, what veggies or meat or herbs that you want to add into your dish. And that's what you would do. Um, now, if you're doing anything like, let's say, um, baking-wise, same difference. So, let's say... Um, there's a certain thing that almond flour gives you that regular wheat flour doesn't. Then you'd be using almond flour instead of using wheat flour. If you're 
wanting to bring fresh new life or if you're wanting to celebrate a certain season what grows within that season you would add that to that bakery or you would add that to that soup or you would add that to that drink that you're going to make before you do your workout do you get what i'm saying like it all correlates together when we're doing that so you know besides having you know your fruits your vegetables and your meats and cheeses and stuff like that what else does kitchen witchery entail well there's a lot of things that it entails you can make a whole ritual just basically in your kitchen so let's say if you want to bring in love and you've decided i want to bring in love passion and i'm going to do a dessert so to me when i think of love i think of chocolate because it's delicate during you know certain holidays we give chocolates to the ones we love so i know it's going to be something chocolate well, chocolate to me symbolizes romance and love and a bonding, right? For some, it may be different. And that's another thing, like, you can look stuff up online and see what the meaning is. But I honestly tell people, make up the meanings for yourself because it is your own practice. Because, you know, I might think chocolate is like the best, right? But you think, um, you know, I don't like chocolate. I like tart things or sour things. You know what I mean? Like to me, when someone gives that to me, that means love. So, you know, kind of keep that for yourself. You know what I mean? And as you're making it, you're putting in that intent. Because when we think about energy and we think about manifestation, manifestation is taking energy and putting it into something. So if you're cooking something, you're obviously putting that energy forth into it. So what I like to do is I like to manifest what the outcome is going to be in my mind. When people eat this, what is it that I want? For her to happen which by the way it's not only about bringing things in or taking things out or summoning you can actually control people will buy your food um, and play certain thoughts and feelings spell work you know all that good stuff now there's a saying I don't know about you guys if you've ever heard it but in the south they say if you're with a girl and you just met her you never eat her red sauce or her red rice and there's a reason for that and I'm going to go into that now, if you're a little bit squeamish and you're not into knowing about a woman's menstrual, this is probably not the part for you, and I would skip forward. So there is a belief that, you know, if a woman is trying to get a man, she will put some of her blood, um, normally from the cycle, into the sauce. That's why they tell you don't eat the red sauce when you don't know who you're fucking with. Because the, think the thinking behind this is, is that they're connecting a bond to you if you take their life or their blood then therefore they have you they have control over you because part of them is inside of you and they can do basically what they want after to you after that point which by the way if anybody has this kit this is the color i was using so and just a little heads up and the same thing could be told for anything that is yellow too and this is something that i don't see people talking about as much as the red sauce just think about it you're eating a yellow cake or a yellow dessert and there's a certain power that's more overpowering and you're not thinking about it. Someone could place something yellow that comes out of their body into it. I know it sounds gross, but so, you know, um, sometimes it happens and just because we don't like to, you know, think about it doesn't mean that we shouldn't acknowledge it. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's kind of like the old saying, don't eat the yellow snow. Be careful what uh, yellow foods you eat just saying um now me personally if i don't see it made i really do have troubles um eating certain food that people bring that's just my personal opinion um i know certain covens if they get together with other covens they tell them to watch out like watch out what kind of uh stuff that you're eating there because you never really know you never know the intent especially if you're just starting out working. Um, kind of took me a while to figure that one out when I had invited another group. And I'm like, why are these people not eating the food? Like it's all prepackaged or just something so anyway, and it didn't click until I started thinking about it. Like, you know what? To me, this makes sense. Okay. I get it now. I understand. You know what I mean? Like, be smart. And is that my thing? My ring thing is just going insane. Okay. And um, so kind of keep that in mind. If you don't trust somebody and you're going over their house and you're eating their food 
and they know that you're coming, you know that they're going to be thinking some shady shit too while you're over there. So just keep in mind, if you don't want to consume somebody's hate, do not go somewhere and eat where you feel like you are hated or unwanted. That's just basics, baby. Or at least, you know, that's basics for me. And you're probably wondering, well, how does someone do this? Like if someone, okay, so think about it like this. So whenever you're making food, you know, me personally, whenever I'm making anything for me or my family, I always think about love. My family, I love them. I'm doing this for them. I want them healthy, happy, good memories, bringing in the good, right? And so as I put every ingredient into the dish, whatever it is I'm making, I always think about that. And I joke with my husband, I'm saying, I always tell him, I was like, my food tastes better because it's made with love. And he's like, but my food is made with love. I was like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying with every step I take and every move I make, I sound like a Phil Collins song when I say this, but I'm putting the love into it. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, when people taste my food, normally the reaction is, oh, it tastes good. Because if something is made with love, People are going to rave about it. They're going to be talking about it in a good way. Now, I want to say this, though. I ain't one of them white girls that does not put seasoning in my stuff. I am a witch, okay? I put seasoning. I have, like, a cabinet. I don't know if you've ever seen them, like, huge cabinets that go over top your stove where the vent thing is. It's filled with nothing but different spices. Like, there are spices that my mom didn't ever use when I was younger. And I discovered as an adult, and I'm like, hey, I like you. And I think one of the best spices I discovered was cardamom and Creole seasoning. Oh, that's some good stuff, I'm telling you. Anyway, that's beside the point. But if you're all looking for some spices to try, that would be my suggestion. That and Mrs. Dash, I like that because I can control the salt intake. Especially if I'm cooking for somebody that I know has salt issues, you know what I mean? We always try to keep allergies and people's health in mind because I never want to make somebody sick because I put too much of something in. You know what I mean? Because I'm old school. We don't measure. We sprinkle and we taste it. So you get in our... That's another thing you've got to watch out for. If you're somebody like me and you know that you're going to somebody like my house, you know I've been tasting that food. You know I've been stirring that spoon back in with it. So if you're not wanting someone to have that much power, don't eat their shit. Just saying. Just putting that out there, because, baby, I do it on mine. And if you ain't liking that, you may not want to eat at my house. But that's how I was taught to cook. You know what I mean? Like, you taste something, see if it's good, see what you need to add, see what you need to take away. Like, that's just always been our thing, at least in my house. I can't speak for everybody else's house, but I can speak for mine. On camera, it doesn't look like that's covering. But I promise you, it is covered. It just don't look like it on camera. So, what other things can we go over? So, when we're measuring. So, I know I talked about food, but what about drinks? What about when you're making something to drink? That would be a good one. So, around here, we do either lemonade, iced tea in the summer, or I do fruit smoothies. So, depending on what fruit I want to put in, I'll add some honey to sweeten it up. Um, you know, sweeten that in tent. And that's another thing. So if you're ever wanting to sway somebody or sweeten the pot, so, so to speak, always put some kind of sweetener in it, like honey or sugar. Honey is the best in my opinion, but, you know, you got to work with what you got. Some of us can't afford, you know, expensive little honey. And some of us don't like the cheap clove honey. I call it cheap clove honey, but it, to me, it just tastes different. You know what I mean? Like you can tell a taste and difference and different things. That's how it is. So. When we go for drinks, what is something that you can do when you're making it? It depends on two things. One, are you making it from a powder mix or are you making it homemade? Those are two things. If you're making it from a powder mix and you're mixing it up, and this goes for anything that you mix. If you mix it counter like clockwise, you're bringing in the positivity. If you're counterclockwise, you're banishing that from your reality. So always keep that in mind. So if everybody's getting sick and you're making a brew or a tea or something, do it counterclockwise. If you're trying to bring in health, bring it the other way clockwise. Always keep that in mind. Always make sure that it took my youngest, for, or my oldest, I should say, forever to learn that. 
because she would be going the opposite way. I'm like, girl, you need to bring in some good. You're taking all that bad away, but you're not bringing in no good. You know, it's one of those things. And she's like, I don't see why it matters. I'm like, it does. Especially if I see it and I'm not saying nothing about it. I'm like, mm. oh, I'm trying to figure out what color I want to do on my eye. I don't know. I, I want to do something that pops because I'm doing a live later for my, um, you know what? We're going to go bold. We're going to try something new. So, um, you can do that depending on, ooh, another thing you can do. You can take ice and put herbs into it. So, like, if you're making a tea and you want to add a little bit of something extra to it, you could, when you put ice into it, take your ice tray, put your herbs in it, which, by the way, I'm going to blend this out. Take your herbs and stuff in it and put it into the little cups that you have. And then when it melts, you get those herbs and stuff. Don't get, like, them bulky herbs. Nobody wants herbs in their teeth. That's just gross, you know. Be considerate if somebody doesn't want it in theirs. Ask beforehand, but like, hey, we got regular ice, we got this kind of ice, you know what I mean? I feel like I need to blend that out. But it would be something cool, especially if you're doing a gathering. And then you have these different herbs. Always make sure to check your herbs, check who you're serving, make sure that they have no allergies, because the last thing you want to be is the person that gave them allergies you know what i mean it's just not right it's looking good but we're gonna make it look better here in a minute my stuff keeps on going off it sounds like a fairy house up in this house there's some fairies in this house anyway so another thing about kitchen witchery that most people um probably don't know or probably don't even think about is a method in which you cook. Are you cooking outside? Are you cooking inside? Um, what elements are you adding to this dish? And this is where you get starting to get into elemental magic. So, you know, here at the home, um, to, I got an electric stove, so I can't really work with fire as an element here in the home, right? But if I would go outside and cook, then I can put that fire, you know, to my cooking which adds passion, burning away negativity, you know, all that fun stuff. And that's something to think about, you know what I mean? Mm, we, we're going to, mm, I don't know, I'm kind of digging it. You don't have to dig it, because it's my face. But I'm digging it, so, you know. And that's the thing, I never got, like, with influencer. And the guy like it gotta look perfect. Well, you know, it's your face. Do whatever you want. If you're not happy with it, then yeah, change it. But if you're happy with it, who cares what people think? Do 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 do. So always make sure, like if you're going out, let's say if you go out into the woods, you're using fire, you're in nature, and you know, you got the air around you. If you're using water from a stream, make sure you pur purify it. If you're gonna boil anything and stuff like that. Um, and you can encompass them elements into your work so always keep that in mind too and you can use it whenever you're doing offerings another good thing another good tip too that you can use is taking the ashes from any fire that you do and keeping them and you can use them for uh spiritual rubs or uh charcoal you know things like that for the future so i always keep a little bit of something you can use the ashes also in like a mixture for protection to just a random thought i wouldn't put it in your food unless you roll that way but i personally don't roll that way so you know it's one of those things <clears throat> let's see we've talked about drinks we've by the way alcohol drinks totally game for that's another thing so whenever you're making them you can add certain things to them as well to bring in what properties you want it just really depends on you as a person on what you're wanting to bring in and your intent and things like that 
Another good thing to do is when you're drying your herbs to hang them in your kitchen. Because as they dry, it releases some of that energy into that kitchen that you're wanting to. So if you're drying sage or you're drying rosemary or whatever it is, those are always good to do. I also dry herbs in here in my spiritual room as well. But that's like my personal preference. It depends on what it is. If it's any protection herbs, I always do it in here. But if it's anything for family or love, I always hang it in the kitchen. Um, that's just my personal thing, personal belief as well. And another thing that you can do is like, I don't know about you guys, but I got a coffee station in there as well. And I like to always make the joke that coffee is the magical bean of choice, which coffee is really good. So another good witchy tip for the kitchen is if you have coffee grounds, you can use them for your herbs. You can use them for magical spell. Another thing too also is um, coffee grounds, like I said. You can do pillings. When you're pilling anything in your home, by the way, I let, let a cigarette for the spirits, myself, and the room. But you can also take those pillings as well. You can use them as compost, which goes back into the ground. And whatever you use to make that for when you're pilling it away. Which, speaking of pilling, that's another thing I want to bring up. So, if you pill away from you, you're getting rid of stuff. If you pill towards you, you're bringing it in. Always keep that in mind whenever you're dealing with anything. Same deals with cutting. Please be careful when it comes to the cutting, though, because you can hurt yourself or hurt others or furry friends. So just be careful when it comes to that. Um, what's another kitchen witch tip that I can tell you guys about? Um, you can also... I don't know if you've ever seen a baklava made, but some of them, they get really intricate with their designs on how they cut the pastry and stuff like that. That's another thing that you guys can do as well, is you can cut runes into stuff. Um, it doesn't matter what pastry that you're making. You can put it in that, and, or you can do it when it's done. It really just depends. Like, if you're making a pie, it's a little bit more easier to cut designs of certain things into it. If you're doing a cake, it's most likely you're going to have to wait till after. But you can do the icing that way as well. It just depends on you and your practice. So... Hopefully, guys, you know, um, this kind of gives you a clue as to what exactly Kitchen Witchery is, along with a few tips for me. And um, I shall see some of you guys tonight when I'm getting my spiritual tattoo on my hand, my arm, and something like that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you got some witchy tips that I didn't uh, comment about or bring up, please put them down below as well. Um, and share those and we'll share them in our next video if this video does good. So other than that, my dear, always remember no two witches, which the same.